In the last drift truck video, we modified the rear chassis to go from this to this with much deeper frame notches, a rear section of the roll cage with an X brace, and new and improved crossbars to increase frame rigidity. Now in this video, we're transforming our old crummy 8.8 .8 solid axle into the ultimate drift ready solid axle and almost seriously hurting myself twice in the process. In the end, we also install our new four wheel drive bed and finally get a glimpse of what this truck is going to look like when it's finished. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see IRS in this truck, but it's a truck, you know? It's not a truck without IRS, right? Ignore the 240SX suspension, the Lexus motor, blah, blah, blah. We're sticking with the tried and true solid axle. I actually really love the solid axle. It performed great with the last setup and it was a pretty crappy setup. So I'm excited to see what it does now. It's gonna be similar. It's gonna be a ladder bar with a pan hard bar this time instead of like a, a front pan hard bar. It's gonna have coilovers, but it's gonna have cantilever because here's the issue. We obviously want this truck to be low because that's, it's cool like that. And our new S13 coilovers, quite tall. This is them maxed out low. This is as low as they get, short as they get. And even then, like if we want it to be low, you know, we have to mount them somewhere up like this. And if you look, do you see how high these stick up? That ain't gonna cut it. This thing's also gonna be a work truck, you know? Gonna haul metal to the store and stuff. We don't want coilover sticking all the way up into the bed, ruining any bed space. So, in order to fix that, you mount the coilover like so. I mean, look, that's like it's meant to be. With a hinged joint here, and then the bar goes down to the solid axle. So that's what we're gonna be doing on the truck. It's gonna look cool, and it's gonna save space. We do have to modify the solid axle a bit. This is a solid axle out of a Ford Explorer. It's an 8.8 8 .8 inch. Now, the ones out of the Ford Explorer did not have the pumpkin in the middle. This side is three inches longer than this side. Not a huge deal. But when I'm trying to cram a bunch of stuff into a, a small amount of space, having the pumpkin not in the middle and having the, the drive shaft go through the entire truck at an angle, it takes up more space. So we're gonna shorten this side of the axle three inches to make it symmetrical. Get this thing right in the middle. Then we're gonna remake these brackets, actually cut off like the leaf spring mounts that have been on there forever, then throw it in. Of course, in order to work with this, we gotta get rid of all the gear oil on it. Oh shit. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. That was loud. Yeah, that was a little bomb. <laughs> I'm so lucky my face wasn't in front of that. Oh my God. I know. 
Was that filming? Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know. I guess that was gear oil. So we burnt the brake clean out. Oh, man. Whew. It was like a little bomb. Oh. Jeez. Whatever was in there is no longer in there. Don't do that, kids. And if it is on fire, don't blow it. Cause I, what it happened is I blew the fire anyway, into all the other. Yeah, you, you fueled it more. I fueled it more. I should I should have just let it burn off. And then your face was like right there. I'm really lucky. <laughs> Didn't know you could make a bomb out of a solid axle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a pipe bomb. <laughs> Except, thankfully, neither of the ends were sealed. It's all done. We've got a clean solid axle. No brackets, no rust. I could just, you know, clean, just bare metal. <laughs> nice. This side we got 17 inches. This side we got 20 inches, three inches longer. Now, before we start cutting it apart, we're gonna go ahead, mark a line on the top and bottom of the axle, nice straight line so that we can line everything back up once we go to weld it together. And then I think, yeah, the next step is to cut it. So now I'm gonna mark, you know, a section of three inches out of this. Three inches. Six inches. So we have the axle marked. Now it's as easy as cutting this section out. Now we have to bevel both pieces so that the weld has maximum penetration. And lastly, weld it. So now I just wanna see, you know, Nice and easy, slides and moves around nice and easy. Put this bad boy in. Oh, look at that. Wow, she went straight in. I would say that's perfectly straight because it slid in really nicely. So that's cool. So the cool thing about this is that since from the factory, they're two different sizes, we shorten the longer size. And so instead of trying to chop and reweld axles, which can be kind of sketchy, we got another of the shorter axles and now we can use the shorter axles on both side, sides. So let's put the other short axle in, make sure it works. Ha <laughs> ha. So that's a success. Go ahead and uh, weld that up. So I tacked it a bunch, so I, I know it's not gonna warp once I start welding it. I'm gonna preheat it just a little bit. More penetration. I can see like the actual weld on the inside too. So that's good. Means I got full penetration and that means I'm good to go ahead and grind it back down. 
So it looks like I didn't do this. <laughs> Like it came from the factory. Like it should have came from the factory. I don't know why the heck they had to make one side longer for no reason. Actually, that's not true. I do know why. Because there was a gas tank there. You know, what, you know what Ford should have done instead of putting the gas tank there? They should have put it under the hood. I know, well, that's a great idea. It's actually uh, my new custom gingium brass knuckles here. So we got all of the new brackets cut out for the solid axle. I roughly designed it off the old ones, but with some improvements. Um, for instance, these are lower profile, not gonna be as tall, not gonna get in the way as many things. Still has adjustment, but it's closer together. Same thing with the bottom. Adjustment for the height as well, which the last one didn't have. So now, take these, take our heim joint, bolt it together with the heim joint in there so that it's perfectly spaced out. So now we got that, we can bring it over to the axle. Obviously we still have lots of measuring to do, but you know, we get it into the right place and tack it in. 33 and a quarter, you know, eight and three eighths plus eight, that'd be 16 and three eighths. Eight and three eighths plus eight is 16 and three eighths. So 16 and seven eighths on each side. So cause that's 16.875 plus 16.75 plus 16 point, wait. That's not right. Oh, you have to divide that by two. So 16.875 divided by two is 8.43. So that times two plus 16.375 is, this was 33 and a quarter, right? I got it written down, nice, 33 and a quarter. So eight and seven sixteenths. So that's where the outside of the bracket will sit. And that is making it perfectly parallel with the brackets in the truck. That was roughly right there. So next up, we mix up some JB Weld, put that on the seams, put those back on there. Once that's dry, it's all good to go. So now that we have those brackets tacked on, it's time to actually get this thing in the truck and in the right spot and start every fitting everything. Cantilever system, pan harder bar. And if we put the axles on, then we can put the wheels on and roll it over there. So now that we have the axle sitting in the back, which barely fits between the frame because obviously we shortened it three inches. Uh, so we will, we'll, we'll have to get some spacers, but that's fine. For now, we have the old bars from the old four link setup, which we're gonna be reusing. So we're gonna put those on. You know, we're still utilizing the, the front mount that we made a long time ago. And that will get the axle sitting exactly where we want it, nice and even. We can adjust it if we need to. You know, make sure pinion angle and all that is good. That's fine. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. Got it. 
So we got the, the ladder bars put in and axle is nice and nice and in there, so that's sweet. If you look, it's actually got like a negative pinion angle. Pinion's pointing down, which is not good. So what we're gonna do is we're going to shorten the bottom bars to kind of pull the bottom of the axle towards the front of the truck. That will center it in the wheel well better too, because if you remember, the wheels were a bit pushed back and I wanna fix that this time around. If you guys have had a really keen eye, you may have noticed that there's not just one truck bed over here, but two truck beds. Now, a lot of you guys have suggested this, but we've actually had these things for a while. This right here is a bed off of a four-wheel drive Mazda B-Series. We also have the fenders off of a four-wheel drive Mazda B-Series. What's special about that? Well, they are wider than the two-wheel drive ones. They also have a smoother body line, which just looks better. But yeah, they're, I don't know how much wider, but at least an inch or two wider. So we'll need to do a little bit less modification to fit all the wheels. Getting it out there, out of there, and moving it around, it's gonna be difficult. So what we're gonna do with this bed is we're gonna cut it out, but unlike that bed where we just not like cut it out for the frame notch, we're gonna cut the entire bed out and raise the entire thing. That way it's still a flat bed that's more usable. It should be a little bit less deep, but it, that, that's, that's more practical than having a big old notch in the middle of the bed. So I really just cut down, cut across, cut down. I didn't tell you guys yet, but I got a shipment of uh, two JZs from Japan. Okay, so Ford. Cool. Yep. All good. Oh, it's fucking slammed. <laughs> So we got the bed on here, the X-Brace back in. <laughs> it's starting to look like a truck again. And my goodness, it's turning out exactly how I want it. Now, obviously, I think we need like a one inch spacer about. So I'm gonna get some one inch spacers. But now that the bed is on, we can go ahead and make sure the wheel is centered in the wheel well, which it pretty much is, but we'll get it centered, get the pinion angle right. And with that, we're ready to start work on our one-off custom cantilever suspension. But that's going to happen in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you then. <laughs> Dude, come, come look at the... Look. Okay. Like,